If you could introduce yourself, please. Um, Simon Humphreys, I'm the National Coordinator for the Computing at School Group. So, Computing at School, CAS, could you explain what it is and uh, basically how it came about? Yeah, CAS started back in 2008, where a group of us, both teachers and academics at, uh, at university, uh, we're looking at the state of ICT education in schools and feeling that there was something uh, missing, something not quite right, uh, and that uh, computer, computer science as a subject wasn't really being encouraged, it was not a curriculum, and we thought there must be something we can do about that. There was certainly a wel wealth of opinion from the IT industry as well as from education to say no, computer science is an important subject. There must be something we can do to support those teachers who want to put computer science into the curriculum and want to uh, inspire youngsters to take computer science as a subject at university or go into the industry. So we formed CAS um, to see what we could do and uh, uh, over the last five years we've been working in a number of areas, uh, firstly in terms of uh, advocacy of trying to persuade folks at the DfE and uh, others policy makers to say, let's recognise computer science, we want to put it back as a discipline into our, into our school systems, and also um, the support of the teachers in the classroom through, through various methods. We started with four or five people back in 2008, it grew to 20, it grew to 100, and now we sit somewhere about sort of 6,000 uh, members who have signed up to join CAS. Obviously there have been quite significant changes in the way that computing is taught at school. Could you just explain to explain what the, the changes are now in um, both primary and secondary school? Yes, over the last two years there's been significant debate and discussion and change, uh, a lot of it emanating from the, uh, from the DfE with the new change of curriculum so that in all subjects there's been a review of the national curriculum and ICT was, also, was obviously one of those subjects um, under that review as well. And the DfE have introduced and will be introducing from September 2015 a new programme of study for uh, computing. It's moved away from the title of ICT to computing. Uh, and the principal changes there are that with the digital literacy and IT, the stuff that we recognise as being on the uh, traditional ICT curriculum, are all still there. But the aspects of the computer science bits have been beefed up. So there's an awful lot more computer science in this new computing uh, curriculum. And that's going to affect um, pupils from all key stages. So from even key stage one, they'll be expected to understand what an algorithm is and be working with some, some simple programs and, and control technologies and so on through to key stage two and then in key stage three and obviously the difficulty begins to uh, to ramp up leading on to the GCSEs. So what was the, what do you see as your thinking behind the reasons for the change? Um, obviously we, we live in a very IT oriented society so using IT is very important but yeah. why do you feel that people need to be able to create through IT as well? The previous um, ICT curriculum um, focus very much on using the technology but not understanding how that how that technology worked and also didn't really cover many of the fundamental aspects of the computational thinking which is really what we do as humans when we're looking at the problems that we want to solve and then saying oh we can now solve this through the using using that technology uh, and this is something which has currently been uh, currently been missing by introducing it from key stage one all the way through they were helping children understand that they can actually be empowered to uh, understand that technology and use it creatively, use it imaginatively uh, to solve problems, rather than be in this situation where they just know how to click and point and click on the right buttons. Uh, they're actually able to think, oh, I can now make some changes here. I can create something new. What else is, is the CAS community pro um, providing to support teachers? We have two main thrusts, I suppose, described broadly sort of online, offline. So there's, there's the online community which is a very active uh, community now numbering over 6,000 uh, members, uh, a variety of discussion forums uh, where a whole manner of topics can be under discussion, some that could be quite technical but some that are really there for all teachers who are just beginning their journey into understanding computer science can feel confident to contribute and there they will find uh, teachers in their, in their situation sharing their, those, their, those same concerns, having those same questions then having access to perhaps more experienced teachers who have been teaching computer science for longer, perhaps have computer science degrees, as well as um, some uh, expert computer scientists who are ready, willing, able to help them to understand what the subject is and how to teach it better. Also on that site there's an opportunity to upload resources and to share resources. Uh, currently at the moment, today, there's about a thousand different resources, again, on a whole variety of different topics. 
suitable for primary age children all the way through to A-level students as well. And we really want to encourage more teachers to contribute there. It is there to say we are a community, we are all learning. Um, some of us are just at the journey, uh, at the beginning of our journey uh, of, of introducing computer science into the classroom. And we really want that site to be a place where they can feel welcome, ask the silly question, uh, get the answer that they, that they would like in a manner that they, that, 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 that they need just so they can then understand and have more confidence in the, in the teaching of the subject. We also run a whole number of events, both from uh, the CAS community and also I'll discuss a bit later on the Network of Excellence CPD training and there on that side you can get access to all the events that uh, CAS volunteers uh, as well as the CAS team are, are, are running as well. Then in addition we have a number of um, uh, offline communities and, uh, and meetings. So again, in that events list, you'll see a number of meetings run uh, under the heading of our, of our regional hubs. And the hubs were something we started uh, very early on in CAS, um, very much fundamentally believing that teachers are people people, uh, and they actually want to meet face to face and uh, engage with others and talk about their issues, their concerns, share best practice, share ideas for lessons, share schemes of work, share good resources. And so we set up these hubs as local meetings run by volunteers in their, in their schools, uh, perhaps meeting once a term for two or three hours. Uh, and the aim is to have um, you know, a regional hub available to all teachers throughout the country um, within about kind of 30 minutes travelling time from their, from their place of, uh, of work. Um, and we've currently got about 70. And uh, they're really interesting, informative places where you can come, you can gather, you can talk, and meet teachers who have got exactly the same issues that you have got, uh, and find some, find some help. You mentioned the Network of Excellence. Could you just expand on that and the CPD elements? Sure. The Network of Excellence came about, we introduced back in September 2012, very much building on the excellent work the regional hubs have already done. So we would already have maybe between uh, 15 to 30 teachers gathering in a, in a local community once a term to look at what they're doing in the classroom. And this seemed an obvious way then, the need was clear from many of those teachers attending those meetings that they needed more. They needed more training, they needed more input, they needed to understand uh, more about the subject of computer science, they haven't got a computer science background, it's a bit of a, uh, an issue for them. They'll, they're used to teaching ICT, they've taught that really well, well now we've got this computer science and it's that bit that hasn't been regarded very highly thus far and they're now being expected to live with us in the classroom. Well, the hubs can do a certain amount of informal networking and informal sharing of, of ideas and resources, but the need for specific CPD uh, training in what computer science is and how you teach computer science was clearly important. So building on the kind of two core principles, one of um, teachers teaching teachers, which I think is, is important, not that it's, it can be only done by, by teachers, but I think that we as teachers yeah, sort of trust others if they know what it's like to be shut out of your ICT suite on a, on a wet Friday afternoon with, 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 with the year nines, then you feel confident that that person has got, understands your situation as well. So I think the principle of having teachers teaching teachers is, is something which is quite important. The other thing I think is also very important that, it, that it's local, so that all teachers around the country feel, well, there's somewhere I can go, there's somebody I can go to who, has, who understands what it's like to be a teacher. Uh, but also understands his computer science, has also built up some experience and track record with that that I can go to and ask for help and advice, and that that's a comfortable place and it's a safe place to go to. So built on those principles, with some support from the Department for Education who have given us some funding to do this, um, our goal is to find a cohort of, as we call them, master teachers. I have to say it's a phrase I'm not entirely comfortable with, uh, because it gives this image of, well, there is a master and apprentice sort of dealing out pearls of wisdom. Uh, and I really want to have this idea, you know, it's colleague talking to colleague and sort of sharing um, expertise uh, in that way. The master teachers are the name that we've, uh, that, that we've chosen. And these master teachers will be teachers who are experienced, probably, possibly heads of departments within their schools, possibly senior managers, uh, people who've got a computer science background, um, who are willing and able to uh, help others in their local community and using the funds that the DfE have given us, um, master teachers can receive a grant that will release them for the equivalent of an afternoon a week uh, to do this work. So it's very similar to the model that many teachers will be familiar with of the um, uh, advanced skills teachers 
uh, that they are there primarily to support other teachers in the local community. This will involve putting on uh, CPD sessions, possibly all day, uh, come to my school and we'll spend all day learning how to program in Python or whatever the topic might, whatever the topic might be, it could be twilight sessions, but also that they're available at the end of a phone or the end of an email uh, and that if a particular uh, teacher is doing some of their own research and some of their own, their own study and they think, I'm not quite sure about this particular topic, well, they can fire off an email to that particular person or arrange to meet that person on a one-to-one -one and, uh, and get some advice and some, and some local support without having to get into a train and spend all day down in London or Manchester or wherever else for that training. It's there in their communities. How does a teacher become a master teacher? Well, it's very straightforward. They simply apply. I mean, available on our, on our website, there's an information pack where they can see this is what the master teacher is required to do, what we expect the typical master teacher to, uh, sort of qualifications the master teacher will uh, possess already. Um, you can download that pack, have a read of that, fill in the application form and send it off to us. There are various moments over the, the there are various moments over the next two years, which is the duration of the grant from the DFE, we'll be looking for more master teachers at, at different moments. But uh, at any point, any year, if you think, oh, I think I'd like to have a go at being a master teacher, then please fill in the application form and send it off to us and we will be, 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 be in touch with you. And it's very important here to also to, to, to mention that this is for primary schools as well. And I think there's a uh, there's an enormous need within primary as well as within within secondary. Uh, obviously, primary schools there's somewhere just shy short of sort of twenty thousand primary schools in in England, um, and there in those schools the computer science bit of the new computing curriculum is just a small strand of thirteen other subjects or so that that teacher is going to have to uh, uh, cover as part of their as part of their lessons. So we, could, we certainly can't expect them to be subject specialists, and I don't think they need to be subject specialists, but we do need to find those teachers in primary uh, who are willing to sort of step up and say, well, yeah, I'm going to have a go at this, and uh, I feel I've got something I can offer to share with my colleagues, both within my own school, uh, but also with, in, my, in my local community. Uh, and it's a good way for the schools to build up their own sort of public profile as well as becoming um, uh, what we call a lead school within the network of excellence where there's clearly good practices going on already um, that applies to both secondaries and primaries and they can become a sort of beacon institution within, within their communities. But if there are teachers who, who uh, would like to be involved in uh, professional training of their, of their peers, they apply we will train. If there are aspects of their subject knowledge they feel that, that they're not as confident with uh, that they'd like to be, then we can also provide some funding to help them connect with local universities, another key important player within the network of excellence, and there they can go and get that uh, subject knowledge uh, training as well. Um, so we hope over the next two years to uh, find, recruit, fund, train uh, 400 master teachers for both primary and secondary. So there should be a master teacher in every single city or town uh, across England. How do people and schools join CAS and also the Network of Excellence? Sure. Uh, CAS is a sort of person organisation, so you can join as an individual. It's completely free. Uh, it's not just for teachers, um, though approximately kind of 53-54% of our members are teachers in both primary and secondary. Uh, but as I say, it is free, you just need to fill in the uh, online form to join the group. Um, we do at the moment have a stipulation that it is not for school students, so that we want teachers to feel, if they're on there, uh, they really can ask the stupid question, or what they might feel is the stupid question, without worrying that maybe their students are looking at what they're doing. So it's very much a professional place, so you would sign up. Um, we ask everyone to use their real names, so I'm afraid it's not possible to join as Mickey Blue Eyes or whatever else you want to have. It's an embodied uh, online community where uh, if you're talking to John Patterson, whoever that might be, you know it really is John Patterson and you can see his school and you can see what, uh, what, what, what his background is. In addition with the Network of Excellence, it's possible for that schools can sign up to join the Network of Excellence and other institutions such as the universities. And what they're saying is saying, we think computing is really important and yes, we want to be part of this network um, and inevitably as schools, you'll probably possibly form into two camps. The first one being, um, well, I know I need help, and I've heard that CAS is the place where I can get some help. So I want to join this network because this will, this will get me into that particular network. I can then connect to other local lead schools and other schools in the area uh, in that way, and that's very important. But then in addition, of course, there are many schools who are uh, already excellent 
and they're all already delivering the GCSE computing. They may be having uh, A-level computer science there at the school as well. And they're clearly further down the road than perhaps other schools. They're in a position where they can begin to take a lead. Uh, and that they themselves can be saying, uh, as a lead school, uh, sign up to join the network of excellence. And by doing that to become a lead school, all we're asking is that maybe you might take one other school under your wing. It could be a primary feeder school. It could be a, neighbor, a school on the other side of the town. Uh, who could then come to you and you can be uh, provide sort of institutional support to, to that other school. And again, Join the Network of Excellence uh, is free. Uh, and it's very much there, both with the CAS community and the Network of Excellence. You make of it what you want to make of it. Um, and it's, the whole impetus is so much driven by the wonderful work which goes on all around the, all around the country. Uh, it's very much still has it, as its roots the grassroots nature that, it's, that we started with. Uh, it's very much driven by volunteers doing stuff in their local communities because they believe it's important. How would you recommend parents go about if they're interested in competing at school and they've got children of school age? Mm. Uh, how would you? What, what can parents do basically? I'd love parents to join CAS. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be involved in education. Uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a job to join CAS. So we have a lot of parents who do join uh, governance, school governance as well. Uh, and that's, it. that's a really, really important uh, aspect of the community which I'd love to see grow more, uh, where parents are inevitably concerned about their children's education. Um, they may themselves, if they haven't got a computer science background, be a bit confused about, well, why is this stuff really that important? Um, well, it'd be wonderful to have you on our site and communicating with us, even attending hub meetings. If you have the parents who uh, have a computer science background, there could easily be roles that you could have to play in your local school as well. Um, uh, perhaps even think about becoming a governor uh, and sort of trying to steer the way in which the school are delivering the computing curriculum uh, that way. There are a number of um, sort of extracurricular kind of para education organisations who are also engaged in this same task to try and encourage children to do more programming, more coding, get involved with, with, with computer science, groups like Code Club, groups like Apps for Good and so on. Um, and uh, for, for example, the Code Club organisation who runs some wonderful after school um, uh, clubs in largely primary schools at the moment, um, actively need volunteers to help to work with the school to run and man those clubs. So there's many different ways I think parents can certainly get involved. We'd love to have you on that, on the as part of the CAS community, contributing, raising your concerns, raising raising questions, offering help, offering to run a hub, offering to run a run a run a, run a code club, but to use your expertise to support the teachers. We do sit at an interesting uh, time, September 2014, when the new curriculum comes on uh, comes on stream. Uh, there'll be a lot of teachers there thinking. Uh, what do I do? And I think it's not just looking at other teachers or looking at a local university, but the parent body can be a, can be a remarkably supportive body uh, there to come in and help, offer support, offer expertise, get alongside the teacher to um, raise their confidence. You know, I don't think that the new curriculum sets too many uh, extraordinary challenges, and I think teachers are very used to accommodating new changes in the curriculum, it, it seems to have happened quite a lot over the, in, 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 in recent times, and they've embraced them, but they embrace them because they're professional and they want to learn, but where parents can get alongside those teachers to help them, just to make them feel more confident about what they're doing, understand that subject material, that would just be marvellous.